Hey everybody, Dave here from Dave Tries to Fix Stuff, channel dedicated to the repair, restoration, and resurrection of broken stuff. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at this Behringer GMX212 V-Tone analog modeling amp. It needs a little bit of love, so I'm going to see if I can get her back on her feet. Want to find out if I can do it? Stick around, we'll find out together. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get to it. Um, I don't know a lot about these particular amps. I do know that they are modeling amps uh, made by Behringer. You can tell them that much from the, uh, the title of the video. Uh, this one I picked up, uh, again, you, nor normal places, Craigslist or one of those. I think maybe even off of Facebook this time, off of Marketplace. I picked it up for a pretty cheap price. It is, uh, I got it for 40 bucks. Uh, the guy wanted 50 originally. Um, actually, I, because of the fact that when I got there, the foot, foot switch was missing, um, I talked him down to 35, but he didn't even, he didn't have any change and I only had 20, so I ended up paying 40 bucks anyway. And as I was uh, loading it into my car, I realized a little bit too late that the, all the screws had been taken out of the top. And as I was trying to lay it down into the back of my car, the entire chassis fell out of the back and smashed into the, luckily it didn't didn't appear to break anything, but um, still, the, it wasn't a very good experience for me. And, and I do believe at this point, seeing how much these things are going for now, I probably did overpay even at 40 bucks. Um, only because once I get all the work done on this thing that needs to be done on it, it's still, if I, if I can get 100 bucks out of it, I'd be surprised. So this might be something I just end up holding on to, which wouldn't be altogether a bad thing because of the fact that this thing does actually have uh, a decent sound. There's some really good tones in this thing. I was really surprised. Um, but let's go over what, uh, what actually is wrong with this. Now, aside from being filthy and needing to be cleaned up, um, which I'll maybe do some close-ups on that, uh, the problems I'm seeing are obviously there's, you can hear the inherent noise. Uh, but I think that noise might have something to do with all the pots being extremely dirty. This entire amp is filthy. Um, it is missing a couple of posts on these potentiometers right here for the effects and the presets. Um, not a huge deal. In, 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 first of all, the guy had the actual... Looks like, you know what I'm realizing too, is it looks like he tried to glue these on. But he had the uh, knobs that were for these things in the back. I just don't know how easy it's going to be to reattach them because it does look like you try to glue these things back on. It looked like it glued the shafts inside of those. So that's going to be fun. But the potentiometers actually do work, if you can see. So um, the effects, one will work as well. I don't know if you can, it's kind of tough to see with my big fingers in the way, but, but you can see that it, that it does actually turn. So um, I have a couple of potentiometers on order right now to replace those replace those out and now that I'm seeing this I think there's a chance that I may end up having to get a couple more of these um, knobs as well because these knobs look like they were glued in here so we'll have to wait and see if I can use those or not but the uh, the problem I'm seeing here is obviously the inherent noise but listen when I strike a chord <laughs> signal popping in and out. So that's telling me that the master volume is, is not doing its job, needs to be cleaned out real good. The presence control seems to work. The drive control on this seems to work okay. see it's got these three little uh, three-way switches on here 
the amp mode and speaker. You've got Tweed, British, and California. My guess is Tweed is supposed to be that vintage uh, Fender uh, Tweed sound. Let's put that on clean and flat. Yeah, no sound. That's telling me that these things are dirty. Very low level. Anyway, um, I'll have to go through these and get these clean. So you have a, a tweed, which is like I said, the vintage. You've got British, which is more like I would imagine probably depending on, on the mode you get, which you have clean, high gain, and hot. Clean is probably going to be closer to, on that one to be like a AC30 maybe. It's hard to tell with all the noise. And you've got high gain, which I'm going to guess is probably closer to Marshall. At least it's supposed to be. Um, and then you've got hot, which is just, I imagine. And then up here on California, I imagine that's supposed to be more blackface uh, Fender style. And then you have speaker coloration here. So these are obviously going to have to be all cleaned out because these are affecting the ability for the signal to pass. So that's part of the problem. Um, now, we will go on to the, the other channel and from what I understand I believe these are probably I mean these have presets on them that you can uh, have different um, effects on there but I believe the two channels channel one and channel two if I'm not mistaken and I will, I'll actually download the uh, the manual on this to verify this I think they're it's not like you have a a clean and a drive channel. I think they're both the same exact thing. It's just like the same thing twice and you just have it so you can go between the two channels and have different presets set up in each one. So it's like having different um, different uh, channels on a regular amp. So It seems to me like there's definitely some issues going on in, in these things um, in a couple of the knobs and definitely in a lot of these little three-way switches that these are all going to have to get um, changed out. So I'm also seeing that my battery's dying, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing up on the bench and uh, we'll continue up there. Okay, so I got the chassis out. Um, and in doing so, first of all, I noticed... There's a bunch of stuff on the back of this, and I, I I didn't really even look that closely at this thing. I just kind of, you know, threw forty bucks at the guy and and loaded it in my car. So I didn't. I, I'm like I said, I don't have any real experience with uh, any Behringer amplifiers, just in general, uh, much less any of their um, modeling amps. So I'm not sure what all this is for. But I mean, I'm looking at this. You've got a foot switch on the back. Um, looks like it's just like a typical foot switch tip. Uh, is the, the tip of the, the thing is a channel, the ring is the effect. So it looks like if you get a stereo plug, I, even though I don't have the um, foot switch for this, uh, and I think I looked those, I'm pretty sure I looked those up a couple weeks back because I've had this for a few weeks. Um, I remember looking up the foot switch and it actually cost more than I paid for the amp. The foot switch is like 50 something dollars. So I'm not going to be buying that, but I might actually just make one. I'm sure I can find you know, like old, like maybe, you know, one of these project boxes, which this one has stuff in it for another project, but I can find one of these for, you know, eight, 10 bucks and then just get some momentary switches in there and, and build myself a, a, a foot switch for this thing. It should be pretty easy. Um, it's also got a MIDI input. So I'm sure there's some MIDI stuff in here. Um, we'll look at, it says it has, uh, external speakers here, 60 Watts per channel, eight ohms per channel. So this can power an external speaker as well. Um, 
headphones here, and then it's got slave in left and right, which I'll have to get the manual to find out exactly what that's for. I'm not sure if that means that this is meant to be a, like a slave unit or this would be a master for another slave unit as far as like MIDI and all that. Then it's got tape in and out, so you can run a, you can either run tape player into it or out of it or MP3 player or whatever. It's got line out, I'm sure that could, that's for like direct recording. And it's got an auxiliary in with a, a vo what looks like a volume control for it. So I don't know if this is another way of doing it. And then it's got insert, which I know on a mixing board, the insert bypasses the preamp and puts it directly into the power amp. So that might be what this is for if you're gonna run some other type of board or effects or something like that and you want it to just go directly into the power amp. I'm sure that's probably what that's for. Um, but the thing that surprised me was how much open real estate there is in this chassis. Um, and how much hot glue too. But it looks like it's got a lot, it's got a few places, if you, it's got stuff in a few different places doing a few different things. I mean, you've got your transformer down here and that's coming in directly to what looks like the, uh, the power rail. Um, this has got, this is gonna have the, here, let me get a better close up with this. So, what I've got is the power rail here that has a couple of, you can see back there in the back, it's got the two op amps, which are your, that's your, your amplifiers for the, the amp itself. Each one of those is 60 watts. Um, you've got a couple of capacitors here that I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but there is, I can take my hand out of there, you can see a little bit better. If you look at the very top of those things, right there at the top, they are bubbled up a little bit. They're they're kind of uh, distended. And so I think that those are probably, if they have not gone bad, they're in the process of going bad. And so I'm probably gonna end up having to replace those, but um, this thing is all, everything in here is just hot glued down. It's got Molex collector, connectors and then hot glued on that, so. But anyway, this looks like this is the power rail, main power board for everything. Um, and then we've got, this is the, looks like this is a MIDI, this is where the MIDI comes in, but you've got a couple of different chips on here. So this might be the overall brain that controls everything. Um, as far as like the preamp sounds and all that, probably a lot of the effects stuff comes in here, which looks like it is because on top here, this is where the effects runs are. Underneath you can see that it's got this big ribbon connector here that comes back and comes down and connects to this board. So that's like the main one that's connected to it. So this is probably all of the effects and all that. And then back here, you've got all of your, all those controls I just showed you. And that's the connection to that. And then those are connected through ribbon cables. But then it also looks like you've got a lot of stuff going on on this board up here, this long board going across here where all of these things are connected to. So. I think my best bet is going to be to try to remove this board here, um, get all of the knobs off and clean the pots really, really well, uh, clean off the chassis real good. I don't see it. I, I'm going to probably, like I said, I'm going to probably remove and change out these capacitors because they are kind of bubbling at the top there and that's not a good sign. Um, but I think aside from that, and I'm gonna have to replace the two, like I said, I've got the two uh, missing pots on order. Um, I should be able to get that all changed out. Those knobs that I had, I actually brought up and one of them was fine. One of them I was actually just able to, to pull the, I just got some needle nose pliers and I could pull the, the post out. The other one did have glue on it, but I used a, uh, like a, you know, a hook tool kind of a thing and, and you know, get it in there and I was able to get that one out as well. So it wasn't too much trouble. It was actually pretty easy to get these done. So I'll need to get those cleaned off along with the other um, knobs on here. So I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start uh, disconnecting this, uh, this board down here. And, you know, I'll look for any problems with any of the caps that are on here. There's a lot of capacitors on there. This is all surface technology, surface mount technology, which I'm not a fan of. I don't really like. So if there's any problems in those, um, 
it may just remain a problem because I don't necessarily want to mess with that stuff. But from what I could hear, this thing was seemed to be working okay. So I don't. I think all I need to do is just change out those two pots and clean the rest of them, and we should be okay. So I'm gonna get started on that, and we'll see where we are after that. microfarads at 50 volts so I'm gonna have to order those because I don't have anything near that size but you could definitely see if you look at the top of them they're bulging so that's not good but that's why we're servicing right so and if you're wondering why I am uh, taking everything out as opposed to just this top thing. Well, I guess we should widen that back out. If you're wondering why I'm taking out um, everything in here as opposed to just this thing, it's because the way these uh, screws are orientated in here, I can't get to them with all this stuff in here, so I'm having to remove this so I can move it out of the way so I can get to the, the screws. So so it's funny to me, it's like as, as little room as this amp takes up. Because I mean if this were like a you know a more typical amplifier that didn't have surface mounted that had you know uh, uh, the traditional uh, resistors and capacitors and all that in here this thing would be taking up like the whole thing probably but even with it not taking up hardly anything there's still a lot of you have to take everything out just to get to it so it's not uh it's it's smaller but it's not any more efficient when it comes to servicing this stuff so okay do i have another one here then there it is Sometimes it's not always easy to see all the screws because they look just like the the component or the solder on the components. So I guess I'll try to take these two off so I can see what they look like underneath. They can't be that different as far as how they're put together because I can see there's a space. All these pots have a small space from the body of them between the body and the board. So if it's just a matter of kind of, you know, splashing some, some uh, parts cleaner, you know, some... Uh, contact cleaner up in there and hope you know get enough it'll enough of it'll splash around that I can you know work this stuff out then hopefully I'll be able to uh, to get all these things cleaned out without too much problem so. okay so I got the uh, all the pots cleaned out I think hopefully um, and got this thing just kind of partially mounted back in here. I didn't use all the screws, just kind of got it that back in here and everything just kind of, you know, one or two screws holding everything in place because I, I still have to replace 
these two um, pots here. So it doesn't make any sense to get everything wrenched back down when I'm gonna have to pull it off soon anyway. Um, and I also I still have to get these uh, capacitors done. But those all those things are on order um, and should be here hopefully within, I don't know, probably a week or so. So I'm gonna have to put this thing aside for a little bit. But while I have it here, back together partially, um, I want to test it to see if it's still making the same noise. Um, I have my speaker over here <clears throat> that I use, my um, my little uh, multi-ohms, multi-impedance speaker. have it set to 8 ohms, and I actually have it plugged into one of these external uh, outputs because I don't have the speakers hooked up. So I'm only going to be getting ones, I'll, I'll test both sides to make sure that I have it there. but. No noise with the master volume. That's good. No noise with the presence. Now, there's some crackle there. That might be that I might be overdriving that speaker though. that all the ones on this first channel are working. Now put it over on the other channel. Like it's working that there's minimal noise on these I might go back and shoot a couple of these again with some more deoxid when I get the rail back off um, but for right now um, I'm gonna say that it looks like it's working need to get these these two pots and these out. I think some of that that um, crackle and all that too might have something to do with these um, capacitors here because if these are supposed to be filter caps on the rail and they are going bad, which, like I said, with the bulging, it looks like they probably are. That might clean up a lot of that inherent noise. So um, I guess we'll put this uh, video on hold for uh, just a little bit until the parts come in. And then once they do, I will, uh, I'll come back and uh, finish everything up. Um, in the meanwhile, I will go down and clean up all the, the stuff on the, uh, the cabinet itself. Um, I was soaked these things, these knobs, in alcohol, but I don't know how easy that's gonna, how well it's gonna show up on camera, but they're still pretty dirty. So I gotta come up with uh, another method to uh, to do these. I'm gonna get a brush and maybe some um, some mean green or simple green or something like that, and see if I can get these things cleaned up. Um, but we will be back then once I get all the parts and continue at that point. All right, we'll see you in a bit.
Okay. Um, so, obviously, I got the uh, cabinet all cleaned up. It's ready to go. I wanted to go over one more thing with this um, because I have. Uh, I'm still waiting for the parts to show up. So I am gonna. I'm cutting back in a little earlier than I had initially planned. Only because of the fact that, um, like I had mentioned, uh, the guy that sold this to me lost the uh, foot switch. And the thing is, it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me to have a, a two-channel uh, amplifier and not be able to have it be foot switchable. I mean, that's kind of the whole reason you, you're doing it. I mean, having to come up here and, and press the button to get it to switch channels doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, and you'll see, I mean, you have... The channel, you know, that that lights lit up. But when I but when I press this button, you'll see it change from over here to over here. So that's changing that. Um, and then over here, this is the you can see this light popping on right here, on and off. That's the effect. Now I've got a um, a stereo plug here, and I'm just I'm fairly certain that this is how these are going to work. All all it is is you've got um, even on the plug in the back, it says that the the tip on this thing is the channel change and the ring is the effects change and then the sleeve is obviously the ground so what I want to do <clears throat> is I want to get <clears throat> excuse me I want to test and see if I put a uh, you know complete the circuit from one to the next that this channel is going to change so if I it shows that Oh, and you'll see that that actually turns on and off because I had I turned this one on, on that. So, but yeah. So what it's doing is I'm completing the circuit, and then when I pull off, that's when it actually is changing. So, and then we can test on the effect as well. That's doing the same thing. Okay, so I should be able to get a a box, uh, a, a little box. For you know, ten, twelve bucks. I'll probably the parts all together will probably end up being about fifteen bucks. I'm thinking, but I need to get a couple of momentary switches, um, where you know they don't they don't. It's not like a like a switch on a um, on like a stomp box necessarily with the, where it has the click that you hit. It's more like just a momentary switch where where when you put it on, that's the time it closes the the circuit, and then when you lift off, the circuit's broken again. So it. That's what I need so that it'll, it'll, you know, at the other end of this thing, it'll just close that circuit, switch, and then uh, turn it, you know, open it back up and it switches the channel, or it closes the circuit, opens it back up, and switches the, the effect on and off. Um, and then I can just hook it up to a stereo plug uh, on the thing, and then I'll have a foot switch for this thing as well. I think that's what I'm going to do. So if I do try to sell this thing, at least I'll, oops, at least I will have a, uh, a fully functioning amplifier with the foot switch so that is going to be a project I'll be doing as well okay so um, it's about a week later and um, I got the parts in for all this stuff um, I actually have already uh, changed out the capacitors in here um, I would have filmed it but I didn't think it, you know putting in parts like that would have been all that interesting to watch um, but I am going to test, these are the old caps in here, I'm going to test these real quick because I want to verify that changing these caps out was actually something that needed to happen because I think it was something that needed to happen so we are going to test these and see what we get so let's see what we have here that shows Capacitance of 951 microfarads, an ESR of 7.4. That's not all that good, and a 16% loss. So, so yes, this particular cap is not very good. That definitely needed to be changed. And we'll try the other cap and see what we get. <clears throat> and the other cap comes up as two diodes. Um, okay, so I'm going to say yes, there was definitely a need to uh, change these caps out. So um, next thing I need to do at this point is I need to 
remove the um, the main board here and get these two um, pots changed out and then we'll get everything buttoned back up and we'll see how it how it tests out so we'll uh, we'll get going on that okay so um, got that plugged in um, I got the I got everything changed out on this that I had to I've got the new pots in here I've got the new uh, capacitors uh, in the power rail I've got the I went and picked up another LED and and got that thing replaced as well um, so now I've got it plugged in I don't have everything I don't have everything locked down yet I got everything kind of put in here with just a screw or two just to get it back in place just to kind of test I want to test everything out before I lock everything else down so um, so I've got it hooked up to my speaker over here uh, and we are going to plug in uh, a guitar and test and see if this thing is actually working or not. So keep our fingers crossed. So let's see here. What are you going to do? Okay, so now you can see the front of it. Um, uh, let's see, channel works. You can see it changes from here to here and back. Um, on this one, Oh, let's turn up the master is up all the way right there. Okay. Looks like we, well, let's test. Oh. Okay, so yep, I'm getting getting signal. Um, let's do let's just do drop D. And drop D. Okay, let's turn the level down because if I remember correctly, well, here, first of all, we'll go through. most of this in the in the demo but uh, the one thing I do want to show that is working is a the um, that scratchiness that was apparent earlier is no longer part of this uh, the scratchiness is gone and that's I, I'm pretty sure that's because I changed out the um, capacitors in here in the, in the rail but the other thing I wanted to show was that the uh, this actually works you can see I, the light goes on and off as I push this so the lights changed out now and that's good um, when I turn this these are working now both are working so that's good presence is still working too so um, everything basically is working at this point so now what I want to do is I want to get everything uh, buttoned back up get everything put in here um, all the screws put in get everything locked down tight we'll get it back into the um, back into the cabinet and uh, then I'll do a final demo to show you what all the stuff is on it. So let me let me get it buttoned up and we'll be back. Okay, so I got this thing all put back together, buttoned up. Um, and I'll be honest, it's looking really good. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, in fact, I'll take you on a little bit of a tour of all the stuff I did on it because it really did turn out nice and clean, especially compared to what it was. Uh, we'll also plug in and get some sound samples from it. All right, so I did a, a really good cleaning on the uh, faceplate here control panel, all the knobs, got them all nice and clean. Uh, this thing looks almost new at this point. Um, I also replaced the uh, all the screws and bolts and all that kind of stuff up on the top, over on the side as well. Um, so this thing is pretty much looking about as close to new as, as you can get. So, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's uh, let's plug in and see what it sounds like. Okay, we'll start off uh, looking at channel one. Um, the tweed, clean and flat. Okay. 
Okay, so. So first of all, we'll go, basically th this is what I found out about these things. First of all, the amp choices. Tweed is like the classic Fender Tweed. British is supposed to be like Marshall. And California is like a, a Mesa or a maybe Saldano or something like that, like a higher gain amp. That's, how, that's what those are supposed to be. Clean, high gain, and hot, fairly self-explanatory. Flat UK and US. Flat means that there's no coloration on the speakers. It's just what it sounds like through the 212s uh, in this thing. Uh, UK puts a little bit of uh, coloration on the sound, so it makes it sound closer to a, a 412 cabinet. And then US is supposed to make it sound like a, a Fender style 212 cabinet. Um, and they do definitely make some differences there, so I'll, I'll point that out here. So that's flat. It's got fuller sound there, a little more uh, lower lower mids put into it. And then US. A little brighter on the US. And then flat. Flat has very little coloration. And all, in all honesty, I haven't heard a lot on this that I like with the with the speaker selector at flat. I will usually keep it on UK or US, depending on how bright I want it. Let's put this to high gain. It's not going to save any parameters on this thing, obviously. So that's why it's got the two channels, though. So you can set up something and fi and find what works for this channel, and then set up the other channel, and you'll have a good two-channel uh, uh, um, selection. Your obviously your your effects are saved, and you can save those and recall them. But <clears throat> this one is very much just a two-channel amp. There's not going to be something where you can cycle through and, and pick different stuff out like that. Um, but that, but I just want to, that's the difference. Like I have it on, and you can really hear the difference in the, the tonal qualities as far as low, mids and highs. And I switched to British on clean, but you know, like I said, I think that might actually be kind of supposed to be close to an AC 30, closer to AC 30 on clean than it is to a Marshall. It's got, that's really what it sounds like, but then when you put it on gain, then it switches to the Marshall, and you get a lot of, of noise with it, but that's, that's just what you're going to get for it. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
not going to go through all the effects on this thing. Uh, that's for whoever ends up with the amp to play around with that. Like I said, I will be um, putting this up on eBay. Um, it will include a, um, a printed manual as well as a foot switch that I still have yet to build, but I'll get that done in the next day or two. Um, these things are really nice amps. Um, I'm very surprised, especially since I was able to pick this thing up for so cheap. But uh, if you can find one, get your hands on one, highly suggest that you, that you do. These things, 120 watts, these things are uber loud. Definitely you can play live with one of these things. They have great sound, great tone. Um, don't be afraid of the Behringer badge. I mean, I know a lot, Behringer gets a lot of, of flack for, for their products, but uh, the stuff that I've always used from them, I've never really had much of an issue with. Um, and when stuff like this goes bad, I mean, it's not too tough to fix it. If I can fix it, most people I think could probably fix it. So, um, but we're going to chalk this one up to another success. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching the video. Make sure you click subscribe below if you like what you saw. Uh, click thumbs up. Leave comments if you have any questions or anything that you want to say to me. Um, be nice. But uh, other than that, we will see you the next time on Dave Trust Fix Stuff. Thanks for watching.